Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai, Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai, Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. The thumb I should not abide lies according to Shara, get double honors to the elders of Israel, being the apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom, Wahabla, Bachir, Shara, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with another lesson by Haruch HaKodash HaOmaf and the Holy Spirit of Truth. And the title of this video will be something along the lines of The Lord didn't take away the Red Sea, but made a way through it. Something along those lines. It was a post that I seen on the internet um, sometime last week. I wasn't able to screenshot it. I have forgot to screenshot it. Or whatever, but I did remember what the post said. And it said just that, that the Lord didn't, you know, destroy the Red Sea. He didn't completely take away the Red Sea. He just made a way through it. And we can liken that onto the problems that we go through. You know, certain things ain't going to just be taken away instantly. Okay, just because you pray once for... Certain trials and tribulations to go away don't mean that the Lord is going to perform that right then and there. But he will make a way. Let's start off with, um, is it 1st or 2nd Corinthians? This is 1st Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. It says, there have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But, well, so anything that we're going through, we're able to go through it. Okay? The Lord is with us, and we really have to believe that, no matter the circumstances, man. When we high and when we low. When we up and when we down, when things going right and when things going wrong, we have to trust in Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Again, no matter the circumstances. It says, But Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So the Lord will make a way out. Okay? So that we can endure whatever we going through. Certain things ain't going to be taken away instantly just because you prayed. Even just because you fasted. Okay? You fasted, you pray in the Lord, takes, take a certain, you know, thorn out of your flesh or a problem that you're dealing with. And that fast, you know, just because it's not taken away doesn't mean that fast was unnoticed. Doesn't mean them prayers was unheard. It may not be taken away, but your strength, your spiritual strength and your faith gets stronger. So that you can bear whatever it is that you're going through. Okay. Let's go from there. This is the book of St. John, chapter 17 and verse 15. It says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. This is Yahweh Shai praying to the Heavenly Father. Two different entities. Okay? Two different beings. Yahweh Shai is praying to the Heavenly Father for the elect. For the ones that's been given on to him. For the chosen of the nation of Israel. Right? Let's start at verse uh, 14. I have given them thy word. And the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. So he's praying for the ones that have the true word. The true doctrine, the true faith 
of the Heavenly Father Yahweh in the name of His only begotten Son Yahweh Shai. That's who Yahweh Shai is praying for. Alright, in the same chapter, he said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Uh, what is that? 17 and. St. John 17 and 9. I pray for them, his sheep, his elect, his chosen of the nation of Israel. I pray not for the world, for the rest of Israel. It's not talking about everybody. The Lord wasn't dealing with no goddamn heathens. That wasn't even a question. Okay? He's praying for the elect of the nation of Israel. He's not dealing with all Israel on this side. Okay? I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. The ones that belong to Yahweh Shai, that's who he's praying for. Okay? So jumping back down to verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Okay? So we're going to go through certain things. Alright? We're going to go through certain evils. Uh, uh, it, it says in the book of Jeremiah, it says, It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So we're going to be here in Jacob's trouble. When Jacob's trouble pops off, we're still going to be here on this earth. When that evil time comes... We're still going to be here on this earth, but the Lord's going to make a way through it for his elect, for the ones that have faith in him, in his name, for the ones that fear and tremble at his word. As it says in the book of Zechariah, the 13th chapter, it says that the elect shall be preserved through the fire. They shall be tried as gold. They shall be refined as silver. And Sirach, the second chapter, says, Gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. The Lord's not about to take away the furnace of adversity. Okay? We have to go through it. It says, Through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom. And second Ezra, the seventh chapter, says that the city is set on a hill. Roughly paraphrasing in. Only one way to get to that city where in dwelleth all good things is if we go through that straight and narrow path. Water on one side, fire on the other. A very dangerous path. Okay? Let me, let me go to that. I'm butchering it. The second Ezra is chapter 7 and verse 6. It says, There is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. It's talking about the kingdom. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall like as if there were like if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water and one only path between them both. Even between the fire and the water so small that there could not but one man go there at once. If this city now were given unto a man for inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive the inheritance? So we must go through the water. We must go through the fire. In order to enter into the Holy Land, in order to enter into our glorious kingdom that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai has prepared for us. Again, I quote, Acts 14, this is after Paul was stoned to death, he said, confirming the souls of the disciples that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of our Lord Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. We must. It's a necessary evil. So the Lord's not going to take away all these burdens. He said, if any man shall be my disciple, he must bear his cross daily and follow me. Okay, the Lord's not going to take the cross away, but... He will make a way, as that Corinthians say, he will give us the strength that we may bear it. And the spirit reminds me of when Yahweh Shai was bearing his cross. All right. And the heavenly father sent the man called Simeon. In the Hebrew, Shemayawan, which means affliction heard. That's a nomen omen. Name prediction. Apostle Gabar, he goes into that. 
The Lord heard the affliction of his only begotten son and he sent a man to help him bear his cross. Okay? So we catch the hell that we catch and certain things ain't just going to be taken away on the sudden, on the instant. But the Lord will give us strength to bear those things. And when we pray to him, he hears our cries. Those things aren't going unnoticed. Those prayers ain't falling on deaf ears. The Lord will increase us in the spirit and increase us in the faith and make, and, and make a way for us to bear the things that we must bear in order for us to enter into his holy glorious kingdom. Back in St. John chapter 17 and verse 15, I pray, uh, we already finished on that. I read it again. It says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Let's go from there. To, uh, let's just go straight to it. Exodus 14. So this might not be too long of a video unless, you know, whatever the spirit has, I'm just a vessel. This is Exodus chapter 14. I'll start at one. Fuck it. It says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pi-ha-herath, Pi -ha herath between Migdal and the sea over against Baal Zephon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. So the Lord directed them to specifically go in that direction of the sea, right? For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness have shut them up. So he was setting a trap. Yahweh, the Heavenly Father Yahweh was setting a trap for the Egyptians. Okay, it says um, in the next chapter, it says that he's a man of war. In war, in battle, you got to set them traps, man. That's what make the, um, the best boxers, you know, great. The traps that they be setting. Verse 3, them chess players, they set traps. Okay, for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness have shut them in and I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. So this is after Pharaoh said, hey, y'all need y'all niggas need to get the fuck up out of here. All right. Y'all can go. All y'all niggas go. All right. And take here. Take all this jewelry. Take all this gold. Take anything you want. Just get the hell out of here. This is after the Lord killed all they, you know, there was death in every house of the Egyptians. Slaughtered they firstborn. Right. Or the destroyer, a.k.a. Yahweh Shai. All right, fill Egypt with death. Okay. It says, And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord Yahweh. And they did so. And it was and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? And we have let Israel go from serving us to so the Lord just boom. Put it put it in their head like, wait, what the fuck is we doing? Th again, mind you, they were all mourning. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. They was all mourning for the death all right, that came into their household. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon 19 and 1. It says... I'll start at um, 18 and 25 and read into the 19th chapter. It says, Unto these the destroyer gave place and was afraid of them, for it was enough that they only tasted of the wrath. Verse uh, Chapter 19 and verse 1, it says, As for the ungodly, wrath came upon them without mercy unto the end, for he knew before what they would do. He's speaking of the Egyptians. Okay? The Lord knew, obviously, the Lord, the Lord knew he, he had a plan to whoop their ass. He had a plan, all right, that his name may be exalted. OK. And after the destroyer went and 
pillage through their village. The Lord said, I'm going to harden their heart one more time. I'm going to put the spirit on them to let y'all go. And then I'm going to put the spirit on them to chase after y'all. Right? Verse 2. So showing you that what? The Lord is in control of everything. He's orchestrating everything. All right? From World War Three to, you know, the geopolitics, everything that's going on around the world, all the way down to the intricacies in our individual lives. The Lord is orchestrating it. He is in full control. Right? It says, as it's verse 2, it says, How that having given them leave to depart and sent them hastily away, they would repent and pursue them. Is what we're reading in Exodus, the 14th chapter. Okay? For while, for while as they were yet mourning and making lamentation at the graves of the dead, they added another foolish device and pursued them as fugitives whom they had entreated to be gone. The Lord hardening his heart. These people was burying their firstborn death in every house. And as they're lamenting, while they were mourning at the graves of the dead, the Lord put that foolish thought and heart in their hearts to pursue after the Israelites. For one last hurrah. For one last judgment that they were worthy of, right? For the destiny whereof they were worthy. This was their destiny. This had to happen like this. Drew them onto this end. And made them forget the things that had already happened. These niggas was just mourning. Because they first born, everybody had death in their house. But the Lord is the father of spirits. So he made them forget all that. And put the foolish thought in their head to. Man, fuck all this. Let's go chase after them Israelites. Let's go get our slaves back. And made them forget the things that ha had already Happen that they might fulfill the punishment which was wanting to their torment and that they so they after even after that they needed more torment they needed more judgment even after they first even though after there was death after all them plagues the ten plagues the Lord like I got one more last thing for their ass for what they have done to my chosen people it says, and that thy people might pass a wonderful way, but they might find a strange death. For the whole creature in his proper kind was fashioned again anew, serving the peculiar commandments that were given unto them, that thy children might be kept without hurt. This is man, this is heavy. Solomon is cooking, cooking in the spirit. OK, but when we go back into Exodus, we see in the moment they were scared. Let's go back into Exodus and read down. We'll jump. We'll just jump back and forth. This is Exodus chapter 14 and verse. In verse uh, five, it says, and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said. Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over them, every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. It says, but the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and camping and overtook them and camping by the sea beside Pihahirath um, and by Ozaphon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, Yahweh. So they were spooked after everything that they just seen happen. After all the miracles that they seen happen. 
Right? They've seen all that death that went into the houses of the Egyptians, but they were covered. Right? That blood on that on their doorposts covered covered them, protected them from the destroyer bringing death into their house. They seen the Egyptians mourning and lamenting. The Egyptians was giving them gold and, 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 and jewelry and, you know, different things. All right. And pushing us out. Y'all hurry out here. Take whatever you want. Take whatever you want. Y'all hurry up and buy. <laughs> OK, but when they seen Pharaoh and his army come after them, they got afraid. OK, it says, and they said unto Moses, because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? We cannot be like these niggas, man. These doubting ass niggas, murmuring ass niggas. We can't be like them. Fuck what the situation looks like, man. Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh is in control. He got us. He gonna make a way of escape. At that point, there was no way out. They was between a rock and a hard place. All right. They was trapped at the sea. Nowhere else to go. Okay. And the Egyptian army. Rushing them. Nowhere to go. No way out. We going to be put in situations like that. If we haven't already been. Okay. Matter of fact, some of us already have been and will continue to be put in situations like that. And Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai will make a way even when there ain't no way. Even when you don't see a way out. That's the point of this lesson. Okay. It says, is not this the word, is not this the word that we, that Salakia, is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. Niggas just want to be slaves. This time, you niggas, not, you, you niggas not leaving Egypt. You niggas stay here with the Egyptians. You want to be Egyptian, you want to stay here and be a slave, you won't get that sea hip. This is the mentality. If they enforced the sea hip back then, these niggas would have got it, okay? But now we're here in modern day Egypt, thousands of years later, all right, and this damn devil, Esau, Edom, the modern day Egyptian, he's going to force the sea hip on the whole entire world. And these niggas is going to run and get it. But the elect is not going to get it. The elect is not going to be deceived. OK, it says it says that um, because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation, which cometh upon the whole world to try them. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians that we should die than that we should die in the wilderness. Coon ass, servant ass niggas, man. Slave mentality, uh, um, Stockholm syndrome ass niggas. It would have been better if we if you just left us alone and we could have just continued to eat watermelon and be slaves. You dumb ass niggas. These same niggas is back today. Scoffing, scorning, talking shit, ready to catch a missile after they get that sea hit. I love my master and my wife and my life. I will not go out free. So they go to the gate and get the ear bored through with an awe to show that they're going to be a perpetual slave. Right? That digital awe, which is going to be enforced very, very soon. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, which he will show to you today for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today. Ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord, the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Stay calm. Shut the fuck up. All right. Be the fuck quiet. OK, the Lord's about to make a way. The Lord's about to come through. Just be still and watch instead of doubting, instead of being faithless, trusting Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. And this is what we got to tell ourselves. This is what we got to tell our flesh. Our flesh, man, we in the flesh. I, I be, I'm in the flesh, obviously. My flesh comes up with all different type of different thoughts. man. I was thinking earlier, I'm like, man, this fucking flesh is goddamn wicked. Not like we don't already know that, but it's like it hit me like, man, this fucking body's wicked. And I'm tired of being in it. We need salvation, man. 
Okay? And if you ain't in that spirit, then you don't come fucking around us, man. We trying to get out of Egypt, which is what? Bondage. Okay? Going back to the Hebrew, Matazarium, the original name for Egypt. Double straights. All right? In the book of uh, Exodus, it calls, them, it calls Egypt the house of bondage. All right? So not only getting out of modern day uh, Egypt being America, but even the bondage, these bodies that we in. The chains of darkness. We trying to get out while you niggas trying to stay here and eat GMO foods and pay goddamn bills and be subject onto payments. All right? And fuck on dirty ass hoes. We want more than this shit, man. We tired of this demonic ass place and this wicked ass flesh, man. Okay? The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. And we know the rest of the story. The Lord made a way. He op He cracked the sea for him. Let's go back into Wisdom of Solomon. I'm going to wrap it up. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 19 and verse 5. It says, it says, and that thy people might pass a wonderful way, but they might find a strange death. And that's what happened. Okay. The Lord cracked. Uh, opened up the Red Sea and we walked on dry, uh, uh, dry land and the Egyptians came following after us and the, and the Lord had the sea swallow their ass up. OK, for the whole creature in his power in, the, in his proper kind was fashioned again anew, serving the peculiar commandments that were given unto them that thy children might be kept without hurt. The Lord's going to keep it. Well, Yahweh, I prayed. I pray that you don't take them out from, out from the world, but that you keep them from the evil that's to come. He's going to deliver us from our troubles. as name, But we have to be in trouble in order to get delivered out of it. In order for the Red Sea, that great deliverance, to, to uh, uh, in order for that to happen, that great glorious deliverance to happen, the Egyptians had to come down. So we're going to find ourselves in different predicaments worse than we're already in. And the Lord will make a way, man. All right. As namely a cloud shadowing over the camp and where and where water stood before dry land appeared and out of the Red Sea, out of the Red Sea, a way without impediment and out of the violent stream, a green field where through all the people went that were defended with thy hand, seeing thy marvelous, strange wonders, man, defended with thy hand. Lord's gonna do marvelous things for us. We just must we, we must continue to trust in him, have faith in him, move in his fear, and he's gonna make a way. Lord willing, I was edifying, uplifting, and exhorting. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachorash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of his only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior, Rachakwadash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. The Thamash Nakabala is a Kum Sharala get the Bahanas the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone ever well. Shalom Wahabla Bachar Sharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom, my brothers, keep on pushing, stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Salvation draweth nigh and redemption is nearer than we believe. Shalom.